Hey, welcome to the Electron X Lab. In this video, we're going to analyze this circuit here to calculate the voltage across the resistor, the voltage across the inductor, the voltage across the capacitor, and the current through all of the devices. In order to do that, we will first calculate the impedances of the individual components, then calculate the total impedance, calculate the current using that total impedance, and then finally calculate the voltages across the individual components. Okay, here we go for calculating the impedances and the impedance for the resistor. That's an easy one. We don't have to do any calculation for that. It's 250 ohms with a phase angle of zero degrees. For the inductor, that will be equal to the reactance of the inductor with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Now the reactance of the inductor is equal to two pi times the frequency, which is 60 Hertz in this case, times the inductance which is 0.65 henrys. Multiply all of this out, and I get 245.04 ohms. So the impedance of the inductor is 245.04 ohms with a phase angle of 90 degrees. The impedance of the capacitor is the capacitive reactance with a phase angle of negative 90 degrees. Capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi Fc, so 1 over 2 pi times 60 hertz times this 1.5 microfarads. Plug that into a calculator and we get 1.7684 ohms, kilo ohms. So the impedance of the capacitor is 1.7684 kilo ohms with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. And then we can put all of those values into our diagram. The second step is to calculate the total impedance, which is the impedance of the resistor plus the impedance of the capacitor plus the impedance of the inductor all added together because they are in series. The values I have here are in polar coordinates. It's much easier to add when they're in rectangular coordinates. But fortunately, it's very easy to convert from the polar coordinates for each one of these individual components into rectangular coordinates. So the impedance of the resistor is 250 plus J0 ohms. The impedance of the capacitor is 0 minus J17684, 1768.4. And the impedance of the inductor is 0 plus J245.04 ohms. The real parts add together. That's just the 250 from the resistor. And the imaginary parts add together. So we get negative 1768.4 plus 245.04, which gives negative J1523.3 ohms, which we should also convert into polar coordinates because that's going to make the next calculation easier. So the magnitude part is 250 squared plus 1523.3 squared, and then take the square root of that. And the phase angle is the arctan of negative 1523.3 over 250. And that works out to 1543.7 ohms with a phase angle of negative 80.68 degrees. The next thing to do is to calculate this total current. Since this is a series circuit, the current is the same through all of the devices and will be equal to the source voltage divided by the total impedance. The voltage from the source is 120 volts, and we are using that as our zero degree phase shift reference. So our equation looks like this, and this calculation is quite easy. We divide the magnitudes, and then we subtract the denominator from the numerator. And I get 77.73 milliamps with a phase angle of zero minus negative 80.68, so it's 80.68 degrees. And as I said, that current goes through the resistor, through the inductor, and through the capacitor. And the conversion from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates is fairly straightforward, and we get 12.589 plus J76.708 milliamps. Now for these final steps to calculate the voltages across the components, it's going to be the exact same method. I'm going to take this current and multiply it by the impedance of the, each one of the components. So to calculate the voltage across the resistor, I will multiply that current times the impedance of the resistor.
So to get this answer, I multiply 77.73 milliamps times 250 ohms to get the magnitude, and I add the phase angles together to get 80.68 degrees. And again, I can calculate and convert from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. Next, I can use the same method to calculate the voltage across the inductor, current times inductor impedance. So again, I multiplied the magnitude of the current times the magnitude of the impedance, and then I added the phase angles to get 19.048 volts with a phase angle of 170.68 degrees. Again, convert polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. And in rectangular coordinates, the voltage across the inductor is negative 18.797 plus J 3.0848 volts. Final step here, calculate the voltage across the capacitor. Current times the impedance of the capacitor. Multiply the magnitudes. And add the phase angles. And I just noticed that that should actually be positive. So I got 80.68 plus negative 90 give me negative 9.32 degrees. And I will convert this to rectangular coordinates, just like I did for the other voltages. Now this seems like a kind of a strange thing with the voltage across the capacitor. The magnitude of its voltage is bigger than the magnitude of the source voltage. But to confirm that you haven't screwed things up, we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law which says that the total voltage has to be equal to the sum of the voltages of the individual components. So it should be equal to VR plus VL plus VC. And if I take the values in rectangular coordinates for each one of these and add them together, for the real part, I get 3.1472 minus 18.797 plus 135.65, and I get 120. For the imaginary part, I can take the imaginary parts of each one of these individual components and I get 19.177 plus 3.0848 minus 22.257. And that gives me 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3, which is effectively zero. So the voltage from the source based on the sum of the individual components voltages is 120 plus J0 volts, which in Polar coordinates is 120 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees, which is exactly what I would expect from that source voltage. This example comes straight from a free online open source textbook, and you can find a link to that book in the description. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.